Okay, so this is going to be like an augmented uh, training <clears throat> workout for the fretboard. And it's, uh, it's basically, so if, if you have this F note right here, the G sharp is your interval. So F to G sharp is, and this is how you can do it. So there's your Jaws kind of theme from one fret down or up to the next fret. Um, on the same string, any string, is a minor second. That right there is a major second. So this is a major, minor third. So um, you're going to be going from frets one to three, and then you're going to be shifting up to second and fifth fret and dropping down to the fifth string. So it's going to look like this. You're going to go. And again, right, okay, still with me, so we're on the D string now, and that's the four positions where it goes down like that, so these are the first um, notes on uh, the string, so it goes, so it's a, very, it's a very dissonant chord, but let me show you that right there, I'll pick up here. There's a song, I think it's either, uh, it's a Metallica song. Um, off of a, I think it's off of the Garage Inc. Um, album. And uh, it's a cover, obviously. All those songs are covers off that Garage Inc. album by Metallica, but... Um, <clears throat> it's basically, basically if you play the sixth and fourth string and the fifth and third string together. But after that, so you go. And obviously on um, on your picking pattern, you're, you're going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, and then you're going to the next string. So it's going to look like this and sound like this. again. So let me get my pick a little bit more noticeable. I'm going to go down with it a little bit so you can see it. Okay, ready? Right here. Okay. So once you get there, you're going to go back and you can, um, you can arpeggiate it into triplets. So it would go, you just kind of tap your foot, okay, and you go one, a little bit slower than the normal tempo like you're taking this exercise. And you can choose to include that when you're doing that slower exercise, you can do... Um, Keep that last note in there and play it twice, or you can just keep that note as like the very top note and then progress downwards, kind of like um, the top, the uh, like the two side portions of a triangle, um, and then the bottom of a triangle would represent uh, the physical motion of time, um, you know, going through the time and having the lower notes all the way up to the higher notes and higher all the way down in standard music notation. So, um, so you could do that, one, two, three, four, one. You can have that stop in there too. Or, you just play it like that. Speeding this up, so we'll do we'll just do like a, speed it up to 10 to 20 beats per minute um, every time, and you want to have a metronome with this. Um, eventually, you can kind of notice your own timing and and what's comfortable for you. 
Um, but, and this is what I do with a lot of my students, I'll, I'll tell them, okay, you have a musical phrase or a motif or something that you're working on, it could be anything, a tab, a music notation, or a chord, chord diagrams. What, what you want to be doing to, um, to make sure you do it slow enough for your brain to, um, it's just a, such a counterintuitive thing for your brain to go through because your hands are wanting to move faster than what your brain needs to be going as far as speed of um, like intuitive thought process and, and, and actually um, gauging, you, you want to go slower. Um, a lot of surfers use this this test um, to see what foot they're dominant with, and um, if a person has never surfed before, they'll actually tell them to close their eyes, and they'll go behind them and they'll push them, and whatever foot they push or they put out in front of them, that's their dominant foot. So that foot needs to go in the back. That foot needs to kind of steer and have have almost all of the weight. Because um, when you're riding a wave, um, and, and the you know you're going inward towards um, towards the beach, you want to be back on that wave for it to be pushing you. You don't want to be on the wave to be drawing you, you're the back of your board up. So it's the same thing with the timing um, that you need to have a slow time, almost too slow. So imagine in your mind, how could you play this? too slow. So for me it would be See, if I mess up, of course if I mess up if I'm doing too many things at once, right? So it's really slow. But what you could do is you could play it that slow and all in the same workout routine, you know, all in the same practice Perfect practice makes perfect, rather. Um, you do that and you increase your tempo gradually over the course of your, your uh, practice session. Especially if you're messing up in one place. So let me explain to you after the fourth string set um, that matches that. So, so there's um, the first grouping of notes per string. And this, this is the second grouping of notes, starting on the 4th fret, 5th, 6th, and 7th, okay? So you've got two octaves there. Okay? <clears throat> Get that G, G sharp octave and the D octave right there. Okay, so you've got that. And now it's going to change. So you've got this... Uh, mirrored image, so so if you think of it like that it's just like that um, so going to uh, right there so you're going from this note that's your B and that's going to your D okay so you're gonna you're gonna transition in order to get this note right right there with your pinky you're gonna go So it's really almost like your um, your hands have a feeling, like I'm talking about the, tac the tactile feeling of what your hands are doing, what my hands are doing. When you see my hands, that's a different perception, uh, the perception of sight, seeing someone else do something. So when you see me do this, it's totally different than you actually doing it. So you really have to do it, okay? So once you get to that fourth string, okay, you're going to go... mess up like that, like I just messed up and I've been learning this for a while, um, it's this augmented interval, um, 
that you apply it from the sixth string all the way down to the first string and from the first all the way back up to the sixth. Um, you, you can do it and uh, I mean it's, it's kind of like uh, uh, there's uh, there's other ways to do it to where it's uh, you're keeping in the same position um, but you do have to go um, right here to keep it like that and it's, and it's basically blocked um, like a blocked position where it's all com compressed together but ultimately you can do that let's go to the triplet feel so you're, you're going to slow it down from this okay so now we're going to do it slower Got a PlayStation controller right there. Okay, so now it's gonna go. So there's your your uh, kind of like a stopping place that. So your mind's gonna want to trip up um, on that interval right here. So we're like. Probably gonna need to practice um, just from the D string. So every time you want to to get rid of a string on top right here, and include a string that you're not including on the bottom. Okay. So um, for the for the workout, you go, and that would be your first triplet. So each note, um, each time you do a phrase or you, you tackle the whole phrase that first part of the phrase, each time you tackle that you're gonna be including another note or another triplet however you want to do that so it could, it could sound like this and, and this is basically for your pinky I mean believe it or not um, some people, even pianists that I know, really accomplished pianists, have to work on um, uh, limb isolation, um, for one, um, doing something very weird and, and different, um, indifferent to the piece as a whole. The motif is going on with the melody here, and then the right hand technique has to be doing something like maybe a trill between these two fingers, and uh, they're playing like 4-4. Uh, with this 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 hand and three four with the melody, so two different time signatures for pianists. So it's the same concept. We have to build um, these two fingers for pianists are the weakest. Um, so it goes one two three four five. So the fourth and the fifth finger are the weakest for us too as guitar players. So um, <clears throat> so this augmented interval workout it works out this relation. So if you could if you could practice, I mean. You can do this, but you cannot do this. It's, it's an optional thing. So if you could practice like this, put, basically putting, lacing your fingers together like that, that's one way to do it. And you don't want to be putting pressure on this either, okay? So um, you should basically barely deaden the note and press, keep on pressing down until you can hear that note. And it's not buzzing like that. Can you hear that? So that's kind of in between, you know, muting a note and having it be a perfect note that sounds off and resonates. And so it's, it's very little pressure. I think one to two pounds of pressure, something like that. Um, it's not, not much. A lot of people on those, on those huge bar chords, they try to get that, that first fret F major, and it's, it's so hard to bar all the way across like that. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can be doing things like this to isolate. Um, you could even put kind of lock your knuckles in there. So I teach I teach uh, fingerboard or sorry, uh, uh, just basically docking your pinky right here. So so as you're doing it, you have this gauge of where you're at in relation to your pinky. 
So I know that's my sixth string right there. So I can do that, and I can I can close my eyes, and I can feel about where I'm at. I should be on the G string. Check. Yeah, I'm on the G string. So you know, it's just kind of a checks and balances system. So try that. So go. And then this is the one right here. Coming up. So if you did this all on one string, this is what it would look like. So you're just starting <coughs> for the, uh, let's just do the well, I'll do the I'll do the exercise. So 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 what I'm doing is I'm just matching it where this pink where the pinky is. I'm bringing my finger and I'm going to the new fret. Okay, let me take these things out of the way. So you could do it like this, match it up and look where your pinky is and just keep that relation. Keep that measurement and do it fast so you go the, where this one is, move this one. And you don't even think about this one. You look to where you need to be right here um, for this single string workout. So you're going. So there's no fret right there, but um, you kind of get the picture. It's. Uh, it's these sorts of things that you do that will prepare you for lessons and prepare you for, um, you know, just making up your own solos. You, you want to do like a... try and make up stuff like that. Kind of sounds like a, a boss level or like a, a Mario fight scene or something like that, but I mean that's that's the, the important part of improvisation is you you try something new you have you really have to embrace your mess ups like um, a lot of people are going to be um, kind of contentious and be like oh he doesn't know what he's doing because he's making stuff up within his lesson but a lot of the improvisation you have to do that you have to know what key signature in you have to know the musicians and, and intuitively um, know the style of their playing um, whether they like to uh, you know, well, it's 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 all relative to the people that you're jamming with and the people that you're gigging with. Um, specifically, um, if if you're gonna play something like these augmented intervals, it's it's probably gonna be in a lot like a lot of testament, a lot of heavy metal has uh, intervals like that, and it's it's called the tritone. If you look up the tritone, it's it's uh, an augmented fourth, so raised fourth, or a diminished fifth. That's it's the zone in between a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth. So you've got you've got um, G to D, or you've got G to C. So there's your fifth, ascending and descending intervals, ascending and descending fourths. Or a fourth. Okay, so that's your tritone. So that's what we're working with. We're working with tritones, but um, note to note, if you did that all in one string. So it takes you to, to there. All the way on the sixth string. Um, so I hope this prepares you for 
um, learning what augmented is. It's that little T sign that you see. And um, let me know if you have any questions on this. Take care and keep on rocking out.